Hello everyone, my name is Jason Marcello, and today we're going to be talking about uh, the djembe. So this is djembe introduction. So for those of you who don't know, and give this drum all kinds of different names, this is the djembe. So to identify, basically, you have your very standard hourglass kind of a shape, and um, this drum comes from West Africa in origin. And I'm going to break it down a little bit, and in this video, kind of give an introduction to what the rest of the videos in this series will uh, entail. So to kind of tell you a bit more about this drum, um, physically, what you have is a good solid wood shell, and on top is an animal hide. Now you can get these like anything else synthetic, but to get the true sound and appreciation for the instrument, it's always nice to be playing it the way it was originally built and the way it was meant to be built. So that's with a traditional animal hide. So um, for the skins on the top, um, antelope I believe is the traditional. Um, a lot of them nowadays were uh, using goat hide on it. Um, different sounds with different kinds of skins. Um, even difference between uh, the color of the skin for some reason tends to give different sounds, a black goat compared to a brown goat or a white goat. Um, also thickness of the skin is uh, a huge factor in how your drum is going to sound. Antelope is very, very, very thick. Um, I even know some people that have cow on their djembe, like calf skin. Um, again, that's like playing a concrete slab, so kill your hands, but if you've been playing long enough and the calluses on your hands are good and built up, then that's an option to try to pursue. Because once you have a hard skin on it, then your drum just sings. Uh, goes over top, everyone. Awesome soloing. So you have your skin on the top, and then this section of the drum is called the bowl, for fairly obvious reasons. And uh, your ropes on your djembe are basically what pulls the skin down to keep it nice and tight. That's what gives you the sound. And in future videos, we'll talk about pulling diamonds in for your drum to kind of tune it up and stuff like that, making sure that it's tuned evenly around the, uh, the edge of the drum, the rim. Um, so you have your skin, the bowl, and then you have your foot. So this is the foot of the drum from here out, hollow all the way up. Um, again, types of materials and everything, the type of wood makes a huge difference in the kind of sound that you're going to get out of your drum. Hard woods are really difficult to work with, but um, can give you a really, really awesome, very ringy sometimes, sometimes super high. It really, you gotta get to know your drumming, find out what the character of that drum is. Um, okay, so that's that. The uh, bit of a background on this drum. This drum is a very old drum. Um, traditionally, it was used by the blacksmiths. Uh, the djembe is a blacksmith tool, it kind of indicated when um, the metal magic was being worked. Blacksmiths were kind of held in, uh, I don't want to say mystical regard, but what they did, the magic that they did by working with these metals that were really hard, it was a coveted secret. So um, what they would do is when they were doing their smelting or their metal work, they'd have uh, an apprentice or one of the, the blacksmiths who weren't working or taking turns or something, they would start to play the djembe. And when the djembe was being played, that's how the rest of the villagers knew that the blacksmiths were working their magic, that they should stay away, and um, that's kind of it's kind of the power, the mysticism behind this instrument. There's a lot of different folklore and everything that goes along with it. Um, it always holds a, a good amount of respect, and it should be treated with a good amount of respect. Um, when I see people just coming up and hitting it with sticks and all that kind of stuff, breaks my heart a little bit inside every time. So, because, um, you know, in, a, in the culture, these things have a personality. They, they protect themselves, they speak for themselves. So um, when you take on the task of picking a drum and having a drum to be yours, you're entering in a partnership in my eyes, and uh, the drum deserves to be treated as an equal partner. So that's the djembe. Um, a couple different theories on how this instrument was created. Well, there's a theory and then there's a mystical theory, if you will. Um, one, if you've ever seen a big mortar pestle um, that they use in Africa, it basically looks just like this. Uh, the only difference is it wouldn't have the hole going right through. 
But other than that, it's pretty much the same thing. So one theory was that they were working away and grinding up some different grains and everything, and then just over time, all the beet and the wear and everything else, the, um, the pestle ended up going right through the, uh, or the mortar ended up going right through and creating a hollow hole out through it. So once it was no good for um, using it for this tool anymore, they ended up setting it aside, and while they had it setting aside, um, someone accidentally or on purpose, but draped a goat skin over top of it, and because of the air coming up from the bottom now, you can have it dry out and all that kind of stuff. So after a while, the goat skin started hardening over top of it, and someone went up and hmm, decided that could be a pretty cool instrument. And then thus the djembe was created. Other uh, beliefs are, well, there's some folklore out there, but um, we'll leave it at that for that anyway. So this is the djembe. For the introduction video, which is this one, um, what I'll kind of cover is just the overalls of the instrument. So for instance, if you're playing it down on the ground like this, flat foot, you're not going to get much sound out of it all. So what you want to do is you want to open up the bottle, bottom to allow the sound to shoot out. So we do that by tilting it away from us. And you can either wrap your feet all the way around the bottom or hold it, but you want it to be a nice comfortable angle. And when you're picking a drum, you kind of want it to be right around your navel with the height. This one's a little bit tall for me. My regular djembe is uh, getting reskinned right now, so I'm working with this one. But ideally what you want is to be able to have your wrist pretty much straight for when you're playing it. You don't want to put too much strain. If you're bending your wrist like this all the time, you're going to have some issues with carpal tunnel possibly, and it's not good. So when you're sitting straight and tall, you want to be able to have a pretty straight wrist when you're striking your djembe. So with that being said, um, drum tilted away from you. If you're having a hard time keeping your drum from falling away from you, um, some people what they'll do is they'll put a rope around the, um, the bowl and tie it around their waist or they'll put a strap on, something like that. But um, djembe needs to be a way for the sound to come out. And um, yeah, so after you have your drum tilted away, this part of the drum we call the rim. And if you look at your skin and you have a traditional animal hide, you'll usually see um, a darker spot down the middle of it. That was actually where the spine of the animal was. And when we play this drum, you want to try to play in somewhat relation to that um, spine. So either play it with, traditionally it's played with the spine pointing, pointing towards you. And the reason is the skin's actually a little bit um, it's a little bit thicker, a little bit tougher right along the spine, so it gives you a bit of a different sound as you go around the end of your edge of your drum. So either you play it completely on the belly, which is having the spine going across from you, so you can play it completely on the belly, or like most people, um, in line with the spine. So then once you have it tilted and your spine's aligned with you, you're standing up or you're sitting up tall, and uh, then we're gonna work on our sounds. So traditionally with this djembe, uh, with the djembe, we have three main sounds. Like most videos on the internet, I'll tell you, you have your bass, which for your bass, you don't wanna overplay it because it's very easy to do, and an overplayed bass never sounds good. So really with the bass, just nice and easy, let your hand just bounce. The key for all of these different contacts with the drum is not to let your hand rest on it, if you let your hand rest, you're going to mute the sound. So you almost want to think about pulling the sound out of the drum. So bounce off. Let the sound come right out. So that's your bass. Big middle sound right in the middle of your drum. Take the palm of your hand, fairly flat, nice and relaxed, in the middle of the drum. After the bass, we have the tone. So the tone motion is fairly similar in how you're moving from your elbow but you want to slide your hand to the edge of the drum. And what you want to do is you want to take this meaty part, part of your hand here, right below where the knuckles would be, and that's where you're going to line up with the rim of your drum. What, uh, what we do in our classes, when we're telling people hand position, we usually have them form a triangle with their hands, and then move that triangle to line up right on the edge of the drum. And that'll kind of give you somewhat of a good posture for when you're playing, and a good positioning. 
So contacting right with there, you want to try to visualize contacting the pads of your fingers all at the same time. That'll give you a nice whole sound. That's your to, your tone. So that's the nice and round and full. So after you have your bass, your tone, the next one is the slap. So the slap is very similar to the tone in the fact that you're hitting and contacting with the general same part of the drum, but you, what you want to do is you want to put a little bit more tension in the back of your hand, and that'll force your hand to kind of open up like this. So you can spread your fingers out, and by spreading your fingers out, you're kind of putting tension in the back. And then for the slap, what you're actually doing is you're basically whipping the skin of the drum with the tips of your fingers. So instead of giving that warm sound by mutual contact on the finger pads, you're getting a sharp sound because you're whipping, you're cracking it. So to do that, you can uh, just basically, you just need to tighten up the back of your hand a little bit. So almost give resistance as if you don't want your fingers to touch the drum skin. And then just by the force of the motion, they're going to contact anyway. So the three sounds, your bass, your tone, and your slap. A little bit more tension. Gives you the three different sounds. So those are your three main sounds of the djembe. Again, in these videos, we're going to kind of try to talk about the djembe in its natural context. So that's uh, playing traditionally and with the culture in mind. When we get to learn the different rhythms and everything else, um, I'm going to try to cover traditional rhythms from West Africa. And uh, so if you go to some drum circles and you see some stuff kind of doing, some people will play this sometimes as more of an Afro-Cuban instrument, so kind of stuff. We're not going to be covering any of that. We're going to play a traditional style. And um, what I would like to do is cover a bunch of different parts per rhythm. Um, as well as eventually get some videos for each of the dun parts, the Sanban, Kankani, and Dundun, dun, and also how to play the rhythms playing the dun's ballet style. So three standing up in a row, and maybe even um, a video on there every now and again playing them stacked or stuff like that. But I'd like to try to complete a full library of how to play the rhythms, um, well, primarily the ones that we cover, I'm kind of putting this together a little bit to be a bit of an aid for some of the students that I already have. So um, yeah, that's what to expect from the video series to come. And uh, thanks for watching.